Hey yo, welcome back everybody. This video we're going to be talking about value types and reference types inside of C Sharp. Now this is very, very important to understand as you go into more complex programming. Since this is pretty early on in the series, some of this might not really make a ton of sense or might really not see the purpose of it. But trust me, this stuff is important, so try to listen and try to understand everything we're talking about. <laughs> I'll try to break it down nice and simple for you. So far we talked about simple types and these are all part of the value types. So because we have value types here, that's what we're gonna start with. So let's just get rid of this and let's just start working with integers. Now before we get started, I did wanna say a special thank you to monday.com for sponsoring this series. For those of you who don't know what monday.com is, it's basically a project management system that allows you to keep track of your work. So to go through an example here, you could go in here and create a section for content, put different blogs or different posts that you want to create and use this to keep track of your work. So you can go in here, best practices blog as an example. You can make updates, you can tag people, use that as a way to notify them or say who you're waiting on, you can do an update. You can also go in here and make a checklist, you can post that and use that to keep track of where a specific task stands. You can also do some of this logging here in the columns of the task itself. So if we X out of that, you can see we have a status column where you could put stuck or you could put done. You can estimate the effort and assign an owner. You can customize this completely. So for example, if this epic number is not important to you, you can delete this column. And you can go in here and create new columns. And there are all different types of columns. There's actually this column center with literally endless supply of column types. <laughs> so this is a fully customizable system that you can fit to your exact needs. Very awesome, highly recommend it guys. I'll leave a link in the description, go check them out. It really helped me out and I would appreciate that. All right, now let's get back into data types. The main thing you need to know about value types is that when you have a variable that is of a value type, it directly contains whatever you assign to it. This is in contrast to a reference type, which just contains a reference to whatever you're trying to store. One of the reasons behind this is that sometimes what we want to store in a variable is very, very large. So let's say we had a collection of values known as an array, and it was 10,000 numbers. Well, if we created a variable to store that, and then we basically created a couple more variables that we also wanted to reference this array by, if it was a value type, it would have to copy the entire array every time we did that. But because we can store references, we could have a reference to this array numerous times, and it all ultimately points to the same destination, the array of 10,000 numbers. With value types, if you take a variable and assign it to another variable, such as int b equals a, this is going to copy the value negative five into b. So now a contains negative five and b contains negative five. If we were to change b to negative 10, a is going to stay negative five. With reference types such as arrays, that would not be the case. If we created a huge array and stored it in a variable named a, and then we assigned a to b, they would both point to the same giant array. So let's go through some examples to illustrate what exactly I mean. So what we did is we created a and made it negative five, and then we took that negative five and assigned it to B. So if we write line A and then we write line B, what should happen is that we should get negative five, negative five. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the value of B to be 10. When we console log them again, now A should remain negative five and B should be 10. That's because these are value types and when we assign A to B, we're just copying that value. They don't point to the same thing. And this will make more sense eventually, trust me. <laughs> so let's do a .NET run. We can see we get negative five, negative five. A remains negative five after B is changed and B is 10. So that's exactly what we were expecting. Now I wanna go through an example with an array, which is a reference type. Now we haven't really talked much about arrays, so some of the syntax might be a little bit confusing, but just copy what I have for now and you'll get it soon. So let's just clear this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to make A an int array and put the value inside of curly braces. So that is the syntax to make an integer array. So if we're to create another variable b and assign a to it, this means they both point to the same array which contains negative five. So what we can do is we can print that negative five 
by using a square brackets with a zero in there. And that'll grab the first element. We'll also do that for b. These should both print negative five. And you can see they do. Now, if we're to change the value here through the variable b, it will be reflected inside of a. If it was a copy, then it wouldn't be reflected inside of a. But it's not a copy, they're both pointing to the same thing. So what we can do is we can say b index zero is equal to 10. And now we're going to print both of those again. And now let's see what we get. We get negative five, negative five, which was the original values. Then we change it to 10 and we get 10, 10, even though the first one's printing A and the second one's printing B. Basically what I'm trying to show you here is that when we make changes to B, those changes are reflected in A. It's going to be similar in nature for any other reference types. We're just using arrays here because they're one of the easiest to work with. This will come up a lot when we're working with methods. So main is an example of a method here. We could create another method and go through an example if we wanted. So I'm gonna create a method here. This is going to take an int array called a, and we are going to change the first element of a to be 100. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of all of this, and we're going to call that method and pass in a. After we call that method, what we're going to do is we're going to write out the value of a. We're gonna get that first element like so, and then let's run this. You can see the output is 100. So inside of this method, this variable currently called a will also point to the same array. But the thing you need to understand is that with methods, this is actually a different variable. So we could change the name to x, for example, and it's going to work exactly the same way. So what's happening is we're passing a reference to this array to the method test. Once we get into methods, this might make a little bit more sense, but all you should know for now is that when we're working with reference types, those things can be changed inside of methods. So you gotta be cautious. This is different than if we were working with value types. So for example, let's just take an integer and set that equal to 100. We're not gonna use the array syntax anymore, so we can just change this back to negative five. So now what's happening is we have negative five, we call that test method, and then we write out the value, and you can see it spits out negative five. So inside of this test method, even though we're assigning 100 to x, those changes are not reflected in A because we're passing in a copy, the negative five to test. So yeah, this stuff can be a little bit confusing to start out with, but by the end of the series, you'll have this down pretty good. So keep with it, don't give up. And this video might have been one of the more confusing ones. So what I would recommend is just watch it again, maybe even a second time after that, and really try to get these concepts down. Thank you guys for watching. If you've enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.